Conversation with your um, supervisor or higher employer. Then, if you record any illegal or discriminatory remarks, then that will be one of the strong evidence for you to win this case. What about inferences? Situational, circumstantial evidences relating to way employer has treated others. So we don't have any direct evidence. However, situational discriminations such as all the critical decision occur, decision making process occurs during uh, smoking time only by male employees. So if you female as a being a female then you are excluded because you don't smoke and then you don't get any information, any tips about promotion, hiring and firing, then that might be one of the uh, inference region to have a case. Okay, and then so this is an example of direct evidence. I'm going to close the door. So uh, this is one of the specific example, but if you can think about in Korean, very um, undesirable remarks. Kind of pia, right? Disgracing uh, uh, or degrading the words um, to female or some other minority groups, right? So if you uh, any if you have any evidence, written evidence, written document, or verbal com uh, conversation recorded by your cell phone, right? So or secret camera, so whatever uh, evidence you have, direct evidence, then probably that's the case. And sometimes it's kind of hard, depending on the nature and types of content uh, in uh, discriminatory remarks or content, Disc discriminatory remarks. Some of them may be very genetic, such as, uh, let's say, like a military service and employment. So used to, uh, if you serve in the military, and then you will get some extra credit, extra point, for government supporting or endorsing exams, right? So, such as government employers. And then, if, if I'm the employer and then just openly and clearly mentioned that, mentioned to the employee. I support all the male who successfully complete their military duties deserve receiving extra credit for government endorse, uh, endorsing exams and some of the uh, governmental positions. So this is too gen genetic, even though it's my opinion, but I'm not discriminating, I'm just sharing my personal opinion, right? So vice versa. Some female CEO openly say the opposite way. I do not support the government uh, provide any extra credit for only males who complete successfully their military duties, right? So same thing. It's kind of hard to to um, regard it as a direct evidence because I do not discriminate, where other female CEO does not discriminate. But it's very genetic which means I'm not targeting specific person, specific candidate, such as if I say I do not want to uh, Ji Young Wang for this position because she does not, she did not complete her military service. So if it's the case, it's not genetic, I'm targeting certain candidate. So this can be direct evidence of discrimination, but if I targeting all females, all males, then this, this, um, there's no way uh, to be regarded as a direct evidence. Okay, so I'm going to teach you um, how, I mean, it can be applied to Korean situations. There's a very straightforward and three-step process to analyze the case. 
and you will see the example at the uh, at the, your supplementary materials. Number one, plaintiff one go has a burden of proof. Burden of proof to establish a prima facie case of discrimination, such as applicant is a member of a protected class. If you want to file a claim using Title Seven, then you have to prove. This is your job as a plaintiff. One go e chabiyo. This is your your duty, your task to prove that you are one of the protected class in terms of your race, color, sex, national origin, religion, and uh, more than 20 state sex orientations. Make sense? So if you didn't get a promotion, then if you if you believe that you are uh, uh, you are Asian, which is your uh, race, then you have to prove that oh, I wasn't promoted because I'm Asian. This is one of the protected class, so I deserve, or I I will be able to use Title Seven. For this claim, because I'm one of the protected class, make sense? Okay, number two, number two, defendant, <coughs> defendant usually employer, pesa companies, organizations ha uh, has a burden of production to support its defense, such as a uh, applicant applied for the job or promotion and was qualified. However, was rejected. So all the employment information, files, and and document should be provided to the court. Okay, you have to prove that he or she was not qualified. Uh, was rejected. Okay, and then last one. Uh, plaintiff has a burden of proof to establish that defense is pretext, such as if you didn't get the job. And who was hired? If I'm, if I believe I was, I, I didn't get a uh, job because I'm Asian, and if the company hired another Asian, then my case will be dismissed. They did not discriminate because they hired another Asian employee, or I was, I wasn't promoted because I'm female, but if they promote. If they promoted a female candidate, then there is no case. Make sense? So the three step. The first one, you have to prove that you are one of the protected class. Number one. Number two, the company or defendant has a, a, a duty to provide that the applicant actually applied for promotion or the job. <coughs> and then uh, was qualified, however, was rejected. And you have to provide some reason why he or she was rejected. Any, any, any other reason? Okay, and then number three, and then your job, uh, plaintiff, you have to provide uh, who was hired, other person, or my, can, my competitor is a male. Or is it white? Pretext means uh, pretext is uh, uh, you have. I mean, you have your words. I mean, your words should be uh, 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 your words should be should be coming first, which means the first step. You are protect class. Okay. And then finally, uh, number two. So number one, pretext. Number two. So you said you're protect class, and then because of number two, right? So there's a number one and number two. So if number one comes first, or more superior to number two, then we, then we call it like a pretext. So I'm, pre you know, I'm the protect class, and however I was rejected. So my defense, my defense, because I'm, you know, plaintiff. So. Uh, uh, my word should come first. 
Make sense? So employer hire a non-minority candidate or continue to research, continue to search. So uh, <coughs> make sense? Okay, so let's take a look at some examples uh, at your at your supplemental materials. This is the case. Morris, uh, your, your handout has this case. Morris versus Wallace Community College, Selma. So it, it, it can be a kind of reading time or uh, English class. But if I if I want to brief uh, briefly explain and summarize this case, the plaintiff uh, Morris actually applied for. Uh, athletic director position, the highest position in the athletic department. And then this is a traditional black school, which means the mission statement of this institution was to promote, educate, and discipline African American or black student. So because of their mission statement, and then most of the students should be uh, are, are the black, and obviously, the teachers and professors are African American. And then she was Morris was a white and female, so out of a six protected class, she can use at least two, based on her sex, being a female, and also color, skin of color. So she has a very strong uh, possibility to win over the community college. <coughs> so she applied for uh, athletic position and then she was rejected she was rejected okay and then she found out the chemistry professor chemistry professor was hired was promoted to athletic director position so he she was upset and the chemistry professor was African American. So she sat sit back and then um, and thought about this must be some something. She was uh, discriminated based on to her race, uh, her color, skin of color, right, and sex. So she filed a claim. So let's apply three prong test. Three prong test. The first. What does she have to do? Okay, number number one, Morris. She was a uh, plaintiff. One go. <coughs> White female candidate. So Morris obviously belongs to protected class as a female. So she has to prove that she will be protected by Title Seven, saying I'm female, obviously, and then I'm uh, a white. So number one has been clear, right? What about number two? University, this community college has a burden of proof, such as she was applied. Did she apply for the position? Yes, she did. And was qualified? And then they said uh, certified because she expressed interest in being promoted to the position of an athletics director. And then qualified position, the second. Morris could certify prong two by providing that she was at least minimally qualified. Okay. And the university said she was a troublemaker. She contacted previous uh, uh, supervisor that she used to work, and she wasn't uh, a good employee and very dis dissatisfactory uh, at her work. And also, uh, probably if you read more at the case more, then probably you will see. So I just underline, she's been a trou troublemaker. So this is, a, uh, this is a claim provided from the university. So university tried to find uh, any, any problem that she, she might have. So troublemaker is a word used by the community college. So that's why, even though she was a qualified, applied and qualified, 
But that is the main reason we didn't hire her. So university, um, the she actually filed, found out, and uh, and she collected good evidence. She met some of the former employer, and uh, and asked a good letter and good words, and also her work experience at this community college provided her. She was a uh, good. She was okay candidate. She was okay employee. So. <coughs> So the uh, the notion that university community college actually uh, uh, regarded her as a troublemaker was not appropriate. So prong three, the last test, who was hired? Morris shows that she was rejected in favor of someone not in the protected class. Who? African American chemistry professor. <coughs> And then uh, in this case, a black male, two things, black male, black is the skin of color, and male, the sex, was hired as a director of athletics. So I want you to remember like a three-prong test, right? The first thing, the plaintiff should explain, you are uh, uh, one of the protected class. Number two, the organization or defendant, employer, has a burden proof that he or she apply? If not, there's no case. Or was it qualified, was it not qualified, or rejected or not? So you have to provide all the evidences. And the last one, the plaintiff has a per, uh, burden of proof that who hired? Non-protected class hired? That, if the case, then that's the problem. Protected class. Yeah. 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 Minority. <coughs> what? Yeah. Exactly. So, I mean, think about, I mean, African-American, being an African-American, not always protects class. At the white dominant school, then uh, white American will be the uh, uh, you know, majority uh, group members. Vice versa. This is uh, African-American, traditional black school. So black, uh, you know, yeah, black school is uh, obviously uh, dominant. What about white? white American in Hawaii, less than 30% of population. So a lot of people believe that white is always dominant or majority groups. However, in Hawaii, Asian is dominant. So if some school hired Asian, and if white American believed that, uh, he or she was discriminated based on uh, his or her race, or skin of color, then probably there might be a case. So depending on you know where you work, where you are at the, in terms of the organization natures um, and, and characteristics. think so I mean probably you should consider the non organization uh, per se probably are you uh, depending on your position are you administrator and what of the uh, the ratios uh, number and statistics in ratio uh, in administrative positions as a player and totally different uh, ball game okay so defensible options so I want you to remember like a slender SLNDR, some legitimate non-discriminatory reason. So you have to think about 
if somebody kind of upset, he or she didn't get a position, was pro wasn't promoted, and then call your office, you are one of the director of a hu human resource department, and how would you say? Okay, first thing you can say, confidential. Secondly, probably uh, organizational fit, or some of the non-discriminatory legitimate. 합리적인 그런 그 비차별적인 말을 써야 된다 이런 얘기죠. Some legitimate non-discriminatory reason. Important. Once you say more than this, then you may be in trouble. Okay, so slander, uh, this is a kind of a defensible option. <coughs> Defendants, burden of production. So, community college claimed that she was not promoted because she was a troublemaker. Okay, which means she wasn't qualified. And also because she was not an administrator and therefore did not meet one of the qualification criteria. So, you have to provide slander some legitimate non-discriminatory region so this is an example of slander university never mention any protected class related words or phrases she never I mean the university never talked about race color gender religious issue and national origin but they actually attacked her qualification and then also the last one, plaintiff burden of proof of pretext, which means pretext means she was not promoted because she was a protected class over applied and, and qualified and rejected. So number two section is uh, inferior to number one. Okay. In other words, in plain words, she said she was not promoted not because she was not qualified or she was not a, a she was a troublemaker but because she was white female candidate so that's what it is so <coughs> she showed that the promotion was not uh, was uh, was denied so this is a double uh, uh, typo she was denied it on the basis that she was not a troublemaker and she had a consistently received positive performance reviews and never received any written rep uh, rep uh, reprimand. So this is an uh, indication that she was not a troublemaker. So she was not a troublemaker. There is no other reason that she was not promoted. So second, second uh, uh, um, case, this disparate impact. So university, I mean, organization didn't do anything wrong. <coughs> There's anything wrong. However, if you look at the statistical evidence, oh wow, 99% uh, male, or 99% white. So I don't believe this is wrong. However, we have to take a look at this issue. How could it happen? So if you believe that, oh, 99% of applicant pools are white or male, then it's reasonable. However, if more female candidate, however, still 99% male employees, that might be something. So we got to find out this disparate impact. So that's why <coughs> in terms of NFL coaches, I just explained, why do they have to interview a uh, skin of color candidate? Well, this is uh, mandatory. Whenever you hire head coach, the football coach in NFL, you have to. No option. You have to interview and make a decision. If you do not like African American, then you might hire white counterpart so I try to find out some kind of a uh, not just fair not just 50 50 but probably more fair 
maybe 80%, 20%, or 70%, 30%. So we need to find out. Um, have you heard about affirmative action? Affirmative action. So some law schools have a portion of some groups of people protected class, such as University of Michigan. If you go to law school at the University of Michigan, I think up to 30% or 40% should be skin of color. So President Obama also mentioned that he was one of the uh, uh, beneficiary who was accepted to law school because he was uh, African American. Texas Austin does the same thing. So some white law school student filed a claim against the University of Tennis, uh, Texas because her score, LSS score, and GPA, and her experiences were way, way better than African-American candidate. And African-American candidate was accepted to law school, and she was rejected. So she attended other law school, and she became a lawyer, and she filed a claim against the University of uh, Texas. So that is the affirmative action. Try to provide some of the educational opportunity to certain groups who needs. But think about, if you provide more benefit or more benefit than necessary, then other groups can, can claim. Because your system kind of increased in balance more significantly in an opposite way. Make sense? Are you, uh, yeah. Um, so uh, this is kind of extension of affirmative action. Some people kind of claim, I'm white. However, I'm, I lost my opportunity to be promoted because I'm white. I know organization try to promote, try to provide more opportunity to African American or Hispanics. But they are inferior in terms of their qualification. I'm better educated. I have a master's degree and they have only undergrad degree. Why you hire legally them than me? <coughs> yeah, so but that's not insistent. If you say minority or a form of reaction, excludes Asians. Because they believe Asian is kind of smart and, and uh, very good at uh, SAT or LSS scores. So they on purpose exclude Asian as a minority on that matter. So Asian people, I mean, who needs some, some support too? But hist historically, they, they do not uh, consider Asian as minor, minor minority in terms of Title Seven. I mean, not Title Seven, just a form of action. So also uh, Indians, uh, Native Indians, uh, a form of action actually covers Native Indians. If they want to go to law, uh, medical school, okay, they guaranteed one or two percent of uh, Native Americans. Uh, spot or guaranteed. So think about how many people, how many percentages of Native American were educated um, enough to go to medical school. Not many. So if you're qualified, you will be, your scholarship is guaranteed. You can study for free. But not Asians. So, um, bona fide, so this is what I talked about before. BF OQ, OQ Bonafide Occupational Qualification Defense. So organization try to get away from this lawsuit because they believe, oh, we are special groups. We are very extremely private members of clubs. Or in terms of the nature and characteristics of job, we have to discriminate based on their gender, based on their religion based on their national origin. If you uh, apply for the uh, shelters group, shelters, okay, refugees, okay, 
So I'm on purpose discriminate. I prefer to hire who are refugee, kind of a, a Myanmar or some other countries, right? Sudanese. So if we know, if you have experiences of being a refugee, then I just want to hire you. So that is a specific types, uh, specific groups of people in terms of job nature. Priest, if you hire priest, okay, only male can be priest. So that's not your organization issue. That's the uh, Catholic Church's issue, Roman Catholic issue. If it, I think uh, if you treat some groups in in different way because of some specific unique region, then probably it might be. Yeah. I don't know if the Korea has the same uh, same policy, same regulation, but I think they have a uh, similar to this. show that members of excluded class could not perform so if you hire I mean you are the Catholic University and then if you hire the philosophy department philosophy professor who knows philosophy however some universities especially Catholic Church or Christian University they prefer to hire priest right? I mean in my former institution because that's the only reason where that's the best way to educate and discipline in a Catholic way. However, similar situation when you hire a Catholic university hire basketball coach, do you have to require the basketball coach to be Catholic? What do you think? Uh, it happened to me. 2005, I applied Belmont University in Tennessee, Christian University. I applied, and uh, weeks later, I received a letter. I need to fill out some additional documents saying I have to prove if I'm a Christian, and also I have to write a statement, a long statement, how I can teach my sport management class to promote, to educate the whole uh, Christian person. So I never read Bible. So I I didn't send it. So I got an email, uh, a letter again, and my application automatically excluded. Okay. So so I was upset, but I didn't know uh, the Title Seven. That's right. So uh, if but. <coughs> <clears throat> but think about it. I'm Korean, Asian, so I can I can file a claim based on my religion. So it doesn't matter if I'm Korean or not. So I can see I'm a, one of the protected class. Right? But if I knew uh, Title Seven, then I should have done something. But since then, uh, I don't know if. Okay, so this is a similar case. Uh, Catholic institution cannot be forced to hire Baptists to teach religion classes. So that's reasonable. If you want to teach uh, Catholic uh, uh, religion classes, reasonable to hire the priest or Catholic uh, instructor. However, if you hire coaching staff, basketball team, and then you cannot force or you cannot hire only Catholic uh, uh, <coughs> organization of it? How? Their mission? 
Mind, body, spirit. Yeah. Human being. Uh, but if I if I file a claim, okay, then uh, the university has a burden of proof why he or she, whoever hired, is a better qualification than, than I, I, I do. There is no rationale. There is no rationale. I mean, there is a weak connection between religion and the duties and responsibility as a coach. So this is clear. Yeah. Uh, and uh, this is also interesting. Age discrimination. Age discrimination in Employment Act. So this also protect for 40 or older. One of the things I kind of surprised uh, at Hanyang University when I submitted my resume, my curriculum vita, then I have to indicate my birthday. So when I submitted my curriculum vita, my resume, uh, kind of academic format of my resume, and then I was uh, asked to resubmit with my birth date on the front page. So very interesting to see it. <coughs> So, if somebody uh, was rejected by promotion or, uh, uh, or job application, cannot use ADEA because he or she was too young. So, this ADEA only protects candidate or employee who is uh, older than 40 years old. So here's a question. This happened. And I was one of the um, uh, committee members for hiring professor. Two strong candidates. The first candidate was 72 years old, first American lawyer. She's been teaching at the law, I mean, uh, sport management class for more than 40 years. And she was the first American sports lawyer. And then she submitted her resume and then more than 100 page long book. The application is a book, so we have to spend, we have to spend uh, more than an hour to review her vita. And the second candidate, I mean she was a female, 72 years female. And the second candidate, also female candidate, who has only five years of experience in teaching at university. She was a professor at the New University of New Orleans. And then the main reason she applied it was in 2005 uh, after Katrina. Hurricane Katrina actually uh, damages the university, so university closed temporarily. So she looked for a safer place. Okay. So she was OK. She was good. I mean, not quite good as the other candidate. So we had a department meeting. So my department was School of Business. So my department was Sport Business, not Physical Education Department, School of Business. So other uh, business professors and, and I'm one of the selective committee, search committee members. So we had a discussion. And one committee uh, member brought up, the first candidate was more than qualified, but she was 72 years old. And how long can she work? And if we want to develop this program in the long term uh, uh, perspective, then we better hire young, younger one. And then I can realize that, oh, what would you say? Who would you hire? Chris, who would you hire? I know you have answered. OK, so that's based on your assumption, right? So if I'm the first candidate, so you hire the young one, the second one, option two, and if I call your office, hey Chris, I'm ABC, so uh, I'm the one of the most prestigious professor at the time, one of the well-known professor. She wrote the first sports lawyer textbook in the North American. Anyway, 
So if if I called you and ask, oh uh, Chris, I'm thank you so much for reviewing my application, and then I kind of curious, I'm kind of curious, uh, why um, the other professor was hired on you know instead of me? I just looked at her resume and Vita curriculum Vita, and I believe I'm more qualified than for this position than her. And how would you say? Okay. But uh, I mean, as you know, there is no limitation, age limitation, to be working at university. So there is no retirement actually. Yeah. So you can teach at the age of 90, 92. So when I was tenured uh, three years ago, I can retire whenever I want. So my wife was so happy about it. You know, I can make as as long as I'm healthy. Anyway, so your job is to find some of the great defensible option, some legitimate non-discriminatory reasons. So your uh, remarks was okay, however, uh, you just brought up some future plan of the department. And however, there's no guarantee. Even though she's young, the actual, uh, so the selected candidate was 35 years old, but who knows, she wants to move, she wants to transfer next year. So nothing is guaranteed, right? So uh, in terms of that case, then there is uh, some potential solution. Potential solution. You have to, <coughs> you wanna hire the better qualified personnel, right? So you can ask him, okay, so we have, we have limited number of finances. Number, limited budget would you offer at this salary okay we try to respect your qualification experience 40 years of teaching how much money we have to pay but we are a small institution we are uh, um, you know college art school so small institution we cannot pay more than hundred thousand dollars even though uh, we are in the school business. And then would you accept this position at certain amount of money? And then if not, then I have to pass this, this opportunity to other candidate. Or you are overqualified. So that kind of typical way. Super, super great candidate. And then you cannot ignore on purpose. There's, it's not easy to find slander, some legitimate non-discriminatory reason. Nobel Prize winner apply for the position. Are you kidding me? But you can say, I'm so sorry, uh, we have a limited budget. So, would you offer, accept? If yes, we are so lucky. Okay? You don't have to work, you know, 10 years or 20 years. As long as you attended our institution and share your expertise with our student and other colleagues, then that's a great benefit that we have. We know what kind of benefit we'll, we'll get by hiring you. However, unfortunately, we are not able to pay enough money, enough salary for your qualifications. So secondly, second option, you can simply say, uh, this is a confidential, okay? Thanks so much for um, uh, you know, inquiring um, the reason. However, we are not, or I'm not allowed to share any HR related issues and, and with other people. Makes sense. Okay, so examples of age discrimination. So forcing retirement due to age. So if the organization asks you to retire because some reason, seniority, higher uh, position employee, make more money. So if you send them off and hire younger employer employees then probably you can save some money so that's one of the typical way to save money you know utilized by a lot of organization however you have to do very smart so i just brought up this issue strategic 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 discharge i'm not going to fire you 
However, I'm going to reassign you to very unfamiliar position. Or maybe I can send you the isolated area and island. Okay, I'm, I'm going to make you resign on your own. So including age preferences in the job as advertisement. You cannot say we preferred 30s or up to 50s. No way. And assigning uh, all the workers to the job do not allow for promotion to higher level positions. And preferring a younger worker over better qualified older worker. So this is one of the cases that I brought up. Preferring, you cannot prefer. And then this is about how you uh, wrap it up, how you wrap it up, wrap up as a non-discriminatory remarks or reasons. So, same thing. You've, uh, you've just been hired as a university. New valuable coach, you discovered that another applicant with 25 years of experience was turned down for the job. How would you react? Same thing. Professor position. 25 years, obviously, better qualified, more experiences, reference is great. There is no reason not to hire this experienced personnel. However, once again, you can think about some other reason. We have a special uh, long-term vision, and he or she fits better with my our long-term goal or vision. Candidate cannot control where this institution goes in the future, future direction. So you can find, once again, slender or reasonable factors other than age. Reasonable factors other than age. So Rehabilitation Act of 1973. So you cannot disc discriminate based on disability. Disability, and uh, there is a two uh, regulation applied. Number one has been made in 1973. So Han Minsu, <coughs> you don't have to worry about it. Okay, you don't have to memorize this, but you have to understand there are just some kind of regulation to protect people with disabilities. Americans with Disabilities Act of 1991. Former President Bush actually uh, signed this bill, and has been acted 1991. So such as if I'm the wheelchair, if I'm wheelchair, are you able to travel every single corner of this building in the wheelchair? Okay. If it happens in the United States and if institution funded by public or government, then this is a direct operation, direct violation of ADA and American Disability Act. If this building was built after 1991, <coughs> also uh, a very interesting thing. Uh, I don't know. We understand the ADA, Americans with Disability Act, more than uh, the American people. But uh, there's a certain number of seats should be available to you wheelchair for uh, people with disabilities. And then if you park, then certain ratio, certain number of parking, sp uh, parking spot for disability should be, should be ready. So not a certain number of seats. So uh, as a rule of thumb, 2%, 2% of total seat should be wheelchair accessible for people with disability. Watch the size of a new dome, Gochok Dome, Dome Stadium. What's the... What's the uh, capacity? How many people can, can fit in? Let's say, as, uh, just, let's say 40,000, I mean 30,000. 30,000 multiply 2%. So 600, 600 said should be wheelchair accessible or people with disabilities. Disabilities. So what about parking? 
same thing as 1%, 1%. If you have a 1,000 parking spot total, and then 1%, it's 10. So there is a certain number, different kind of ratio. If you have a four parking spot, then at least one parking spot for the disabled. And if you have eight spot, and two. And then if you have more than thousand, uh, hundred or, or more, then just simply one percent. <coughs> so covered disabilities, physical impairment, blindness, and deafness. So physical impairment will be covered. And uh, mental impairment, uh, mental disability, and psychological disorders, kind of ADHD and autism, and infectious contagious disease, HIV, human uh, immunodeficiency virus, infectious contagious disease. So from the movie that I just mentioned, Philadelphia, it was a HIV patient. So we had a lack of understanding at the time. We do have a better, right? And the one of the actor, Charlie Sheen, actually was was on TV yesterday, and he was diagnosed with HIV virus four years ago, and he had a sexual relationship after that, you know, so many times. So uh, there's uh, some rumors around anyway. So he um, confessed that he has a uh, he knew. HIV virus uh, four years ago that he tried to uh, be honest with the media anyway. So then if somebody mistreat or discriminate him based on his HIV virus, right? Then age, uh, age then probably um, he can have a chance to file a claim. So not cover correctable impairment such as poor eyesight. Can be correctable if you have a uh, poor eyesight, you can wear it, uh, wear the glasses, or uh, blood pressure. It can be managed if you take pills. And uh, past drug addi uh, addiction, so this type of addiction or alcoholism, then it will be, it will not be covered. Yeah. That's a good question. So, I mean, the organization should provide some kind of uh, uh, option, curable options. So, HIV, uh, uh, infectious contagious disease, HIV, but as long as you can, uh, you can work certain way, then you can stop um, contagion of the viruses. So, as long, I mean, if there's no way to control uh, the contagion, then probably uh, uh, you should be treated in a separate you know, separate place. But as long as it can be controlled in a certain way, then without any reason, and, and because of that virus, cannot be uh, cannot be discriminated. Okay. Good. Okay, elements necessary for successful 504 and ADA claim. Plaintiff has covered disability. So this is a similar to prolong, three prolonged tests. If you want to file a claim, a lawsuit, and you have to prove that you are one of the protected class, such as disability, and disability substantially limit a major life activity, major life activity, and plaintiff suffered discrimination based on that disability. Are you wheelchair all of a sudden? A major automobile accident, yeah. And the 90% have accident, major life ac activity. If you watch insurance company, uh, the TV advertisement, you will see 80% of loss of your major life activity, which means you become wheelchair all of a sudden. So there is a, some, you know, some uh, methodology to, to estimate you know, percentage of major life activity. And no reasonable accommodation was made. So if you are ADA, uh, some kind of disability, organization has a duty to provide reasonable accommodation. If you're in a wheelchair all of a sudden, 
you can ask in the university. I, I, I think the class in Olympic State, Olympic Gym, I'm not able to access that certain room. So it actually happened a couple of years ago by a Korean American student who became on wheelchair and they have to take class by class, class to class. In a certain building, there's no eleva elevator. So he filed a claim. So university uh, uh, installed elevator for only him. He's the only one who used the elevator, who need the elevator. But university assigned one of the classes he has to take. I gotta take the class. There's no wheelchair, I mean, there's no elevator. I'm not able to access that class. This is a direct violation of ADA and 504. So organization should provide reasonable accommodation. Reasonable means kind of very sub, uh, subjective. How reasonable? So a major activity uh, uh, stand for kind of a caring for oneself, performing manual tasks, uh, walking, singing, hearing, speaking, reading, learning, and working. So these are uh, uh, um, considered as major life activities. So uh, one of the fans of University of Maryland football team filed a claim, filed a lawsuit saying, I'm <coughs> hearing problems. I lost about 80 or 90 percent of hearing uh, ability. So everyone's singing the song at the stadium. I don't know what they're saying. So he said, uh, he, uh, he said, I deserve the same entertainment option at the venue, at the stadium. So uni uh, the uh, university provided, started providing all the lyrics of song are played at the, at the game. But some songs has a kind of bad words and phrases. So this is a family entertainment. Some minors uh, don't want to see their words. So they have a new policy. If you have any hearing problems, please contact us and we will send you all the songs, lyrics of songs in advance by email or message. So you will see what we're saying. So that's the reasonable accommodation. Reasonable accommodation. So this is the last line. So under the following condition, adverse action is not solely based on disability then you will not be covered. An employee could not perform essential job functions, reasonable accommodation is offered, then no claim, no lawsuit uh, can be made. Unfortunately, um, my former institution, two, uh, about 10 years ago, who was teaching sports facility class and he has a, a family uh, he has a major car accident all of a sudden he became on wheelchair permanently so he has a pain and he was not able to take the student uh, to the uh, the trip because teaching facility class then he has to take a trip to the sports team and sports venue and then there's no accommodation was made. So my department said he is not qualified to teach that class anymore. So he was assigned to teach other class. And then when he applied for his tenure, and then he was rejected. So he filed a claim. It, it took about three years. So he believed that he was fired he didn't get the, the tenure because his disability and then he won he won so he uh, he was ordered to get one million dollar in cash and his daughter uh, was going to that university uh, as a benefit tuition benefit even though he was uh, uh, <coughs> even though he was he lost his job his daughter was able to go to that university until she finishes school for free. 
So he got one million dollar in cash, and then he was able to work in other institution as a professor. So anyway, um, so discrimination based on disability, but some employer trying to wrap up as a non-discriminatory issues, right? So trying to um, kind of make it as um, this qualification or this certified uh, work performance so they can fire a certain employee in a different way in a legal way but I think it's more uh, prevalent in Korea so they they don't want to you know provide any uh, reasonable accommodation yeah. any any questions Uh, also, I know some some who was working for the one of the cosmetics company, and then he was diagnosed with cancer, and he's survivor of cancer not right now, but he lost his job because the company knew he was he had a cancer, so they believe he's not able to perform his duties and responsibilities that as he used to. So they provided some um, some compensation and then uh, ask him to resign not fire firing and resigning is different way so resign uh, because of his uh, cancer so something's happening but as long as it's related to sports that I want you to bring up in the class so let's have more discussion and we have a uh, two major topics uh, remain. Uh, number one is religious issue and drug testing issue. And then obviously I can have another topic which is a gender issue if you have time. And then we have a final exams. Right? Okay, thank you so much.